Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Kristen Hildebrand, Warren County Extension Agent for Horticulture. Good morning, Kristen. Good morning, Joanna. Now, Kristen, I know your phone has been overloaded with calls. Yes. People, you know, it's been nice. People have been getting outside and mm -hmm. they might see some injury, browning, different things like that to their shrubs and landscape and they're calling you to see what is it. There is a lot of winter injury that can occur in the winter season and sometimes, you know, people are a little bit alarmed about it. They think, oh, it may be a you know, some type of new fungus in town or, you know, and I understand why there's such a, a such a concern yeah. about it too. So um, this is simply something that's due to the environment. So if you can recall back to the end of uh, December, we had like really low temperatures. Mm -hmm. And whenever you have snow or excessive cold, and we were down in negatives um, for a couple of days, um, you know, a series of days, then that is really hurtful, especially to our evergreen plants in our landscape. So think about your hollies, think about your rhododendrons, our variety can be affected. A lot of it um, can have more of a broadleaf to it, or it could be, I was even getting calls about Nandina, mm -hmm. which is heavenly bamboo. So, I mean, there's a lot of different plants it can affect. Uh, I know we saw some damage here in our office on the laurels, which is our cherry laurels, but you can also have it on a lot of different plants too. Boxwood's also affected. So there's just a numerous amount of different uh, plants that it's gonna affect. And so what happens, Joanna, is that whenever you go down that low as far as temperature, um, and like when it stays like that for a long period of time, it wicks a lot of moisture away from that leaf. And so whenever that plant can't restore the moisture that's wicked out of the leaf, then on those prettier days that we had, then the browning started. And so that's when we started getting the phone call. So um, the, the plant hopefully is not completely dead. Um, I know that really, Joanna, that the next question from there was, okay, what can we do about it? So really, it's just a waiting game at this point. You have to wait and to see how things are gonna leaf out in the spring of the year. And according to you know how our environment is in the spring, it could be you know later spring, it could be early spring, but you can just further evaluate the winter damage at that point. Um, a lot of times with this also winter burn, um, there can also be, you know, a lot of times in the winter time when there's snow, we typically use a lot of salt. And so salt can also be another way of severeness with the winter burn if it's close to any kind of like um, parking lot structure, sidewalk. Um, I know a lot of times like you'll see on a major highway, you know, if there's a lot of sidewalks and things like that. But a lot of times you'll see the dividing line of where the damage is, where the winter burn occurs. So that can be also play into a factor too. So generally, you know, we get those phone calls and, and their causes for concern. But basically you want to just, you know, wait until the spring, see what kind of damage um, and kind of see how it leaves out. Because you can always print that out at that point uh, and see, you know, if it's going to help it too. And Kristen, it's probably not the same all across the board. You know, we've had some people say, well, my boxwood was brown, but my neighbor boxwood didn't seem like it was as bad as mine yes. and I think a lot of that determinant depends on the amount of stress that plant was going under before it went into this yeah so if you see the drought that we had back in the summer has caused a lot of you know kind of it's weakened a lot of the plants in our landscape so because of that drought you know the the winter burn can be a little bit more severe and so you're right even the location of that plant you know versus your neighbor it may be completely on a different side of their house from yours. So sometimes even like the south, southwest may be a little bit more damaged because that's typically the winds that we get. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes it can be more severe um, from others for sure. And one of the other things I wanted to say is another way to test is to, in the spring, you can look about the scratch test. So whenever you scratch away the bark, um, if it's brown, you know, it's dead, so you can just print it out real easy. But if you scratch it on the bark and it comes back green, you know, there's a little bit of good growth there. But there's other things that people can do, you know, um, mulching, um, also watering when needed, and then other things, you know, as far as placement. And when you plant the new plants and evergreens, that also plays into a factor too. All right, Kristen. And so we will wait and see how it comes out. But if you need help, if you need publications on pruning or maybe how to get a good start with your landscape plants, you can always contact your local extension office and we'd be happy to help. Thanks for watching and have a great day.